Uh, what is the relationship between work output and working long hours? This was a ho hotly contested issue back in the 19th century ah. when workers were putting in 11, 12 hours a day, uh, 70, 80 hours a week, and employers strongly resisted uh, workers' calls for shorter hours. Mm. Uh, a few employers uh, did not resist, and a few employers actually conducted experiments. Uh, one such experiment was conducted by a iron and steel manufacturer, William Mother, in Manchester. Oh. And he, uh, his workers were working 54 hours a week. And he agreed with his union to conduct an experiment for a year that would cut hours to 48. Wow. And if after a, a year, either the union or the employer wanted to go back to the old regime of 54 hours, mm. they would do so. Oh. As it turned out, after a year, neither wanted to go back Ah. to the 54-hour work week, and the hours were reduced permanently to 48 uh, until the First World War. Wow. As a consequence of this, the, uh, the um, British government reduced working hours on its, uh, in its Woolwich Arsenal military, uh, munitions factory. And... Um, when war broke out in 1914, and the young men flocked to volunteer and leave their, leave their paid employment, and women took their place, yeah. uh, the issue of hours and output returned. And a committee was set up, a committee on the health of munition workers, and... They also conducted um, effectively what might be called an experiment by examining the relationship between weekly hours of work and, uh, and uh, their output of shells. Oh. They, this committee, or the researchers of this committee, uh, found... William Mother's um, conclusions uh, consistent with their own evidence that uh, output rises as people work longer hours, mm. but the increase in output is small okay. relative to the uh, increase in hours. Mm. So there were, in other words, uh, a 10% increase in hours of work resulted in a substantially less than 10% increase in output. Uh -huh. so, um, uh, so the committee recommended shorter hours of work. Uh, yeah. uh, actually, they found even worse, even worse than just long hours, the mm -hmm. seven days of work. Oh. That is, if workers worked for seven days, their output was in fact lower than those weeks when they worked six days. Oh. And um, indeed, if workers worked for seven days uh, a week, not only was the output in that week harmed, but output in the following week was also damaged. Mm. 
Oh. Uh, this has been taken up more recently by a number of German researchers mm. who refer to this as the need for workers to recover from work. Mm. So recovery from work is regarded as a uh, legitimate uh, need for workers uh, if they are going to perform well. Yes, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so, it's sort of linked to this, and you have sort of got on to this, but sort of according to sort of research, what is the link between working long hours and productivity? Well, uh, it depends how you measure productivity. Mm -hmm. um, if you measure... Well, first of all, you need a well-defined measure of output mm -hmm. and for many service occupations this is difficult mm -hmm. um, uh, it's difficult to measure for example the performance of doctors or mm -hmm. the performance of lawyers mm -hmm. but um, we're in manufacturing when there's a well-defined uh, output mm -hmm. um, it's uh, less of a problem to measure mm -hmm. productivity mm -hmm. If you measure it, there, one way to measure productivity in the way that economists often measure it is they ask, if I work uh, one more hour, mm. by how much does output rise? Mm. And that's, that's examining when you ask, when you ask, if I work one more hour, how much does output change? That is called in economics the marginal product of an hour of work. Mm -hmm. The increase in output following one more hour of work. Mm -hmm. And this clearly, uh, uh, clearly, after a threshold falls as um, you work more and more hours. Mm -hmm. So put it differently... A typical worker will work, uh, excuse me, a typical worker will produce more um, by working one more hour mm. if he or she has already worked three hours than if she or he has already worked eight hours. Mm. So the increase in output following one more hour of work is greater at low hours than it is in long hours. Yeah. That's the marginal, what is called the marginal product okay. of an hour of work. Yeah. The average product, that is output divided by the number of hours worked, also falls uh, as hours increase. Mm -hmm. Now, the threshold at which uh, this happens um, varies. It varies across individual workers and it varies across the particular task that they're attending to mm -hmm. but in a wide range of activities it seems to operate uh, between 35 and 45 hours a week uh, yeah. uh, it, it will be at a um, shorter hours when the work is very arduous this point of diminishing returns will be longer uh, when um, uh, the work is less demanding. Ah, uh, yes. Brilliant. But that, is, uh, so that is excellent. Thank you. Um, just sort of moving on a little bit. So are there any benefits to PhD students limiting the amount of hours they work? Well, it depends upon where, how many hours they're already working. Mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, if they're working, well, well the, the, as I've indicated, there are two dimensions to think mm -hmm. about. How many hours you work per day and how many days do you work in a typical week? Um, I certainly urge all my students not to work seven days a week. Okay. I I tell them, I urge them to spend at least one day 
doing something completely different. Mm -hmm. Going for a walk, going for a run, reading a history book, reading a novel, um, doing something different. And uh, I do believe that there are other hours will be more productive mm. by spending one day at least doing less, uh, do doing no work. Yeah, yeah. And as for hours per day, I also encourage them the need to have long, uh, full sleep mm. and indeed to buffer that sleep with time that is before you go to sleep um spend time doing something else other than work so what that means in practice is don't work more than eight hours uh, yeah. this is what i explicitly tell my students and i remind them of it during the mm -hmm. during the term uh, that's absolutely brilliant thank you um, have you got any further suggestions for PhD students on working long hours from your own experiences? So that's either is sort of from a supervisor point of view or from sort of um, what you've seen and things like that. Well, let me just mention one point hmm. um, that I've not made clear to this point. Uh, I mentioned how when you... Uh, the, the, the old studies... Uh, were in manufacturing industry where there's a well-defined output. Mm. Uh, in re the recent research has often been in the field of health. Mm -hmm. That is, people have studied the health consequences of long hours of work. Mm. Um, they've studied this for particular occupations, and they've discovered this, uh, they've analyzed this, in large representative samples of the population. Uh, an example of the particular occupations are the, um, is the, is the work that uh, a man named Michael Marmot at University College London and his colleagues have done studying um, civil servants in London. Oh. They're called uh, the Westminster Studies. He's, uh, he's surveyed uh, cohorts of civil servants over the years and, for example, giving them uh, one, one class of work, they've given them cognitive tests, that is, tests of mathematical and inductive reasoning. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the papers reports on over 2,000 civil servants followed over uh, a period of 10 years where they found that, people, that civil servants working, uh, well, their performance in these cognitive tests declined the longer their usual hours of work. Ah, okay, yeah. Uh, other... other um, uh, other members of uh, Michael Marmot's team have looked directly at health effects mm. like cardiovascular disease um, and found, again, a link between the incidence of cardiovac cardiovascular disease and long hours of work. So wow. th these, these earlier results mm. where they were... Uh, they were uh, examining the output of shells uh, and the output of um, uh, manufacturing goods um, has been replaced by work looking at um, uh, the health consequences uh, of long hours of work mm. and found um, damaging consequences of such long hours. Oh, I mean, okay. the point is that the general point is there's a distinction between what one might call nominal hours of work, mm. that is the hours that are registered, and effective hours of work. Mm. Workers, individuals, become less effective in their performance the longer they work. Mm. Yeah, 
Wow. That, that's, that's really interesting. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, no, that is absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. And, um, oh, you're very welcome. And um, for your interview as well. That is absolutely brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just... Okay. Just switching off the recording.